Welcome to this tutorial on using generative AI tools critically and with integrity from the University of Reading study advice team. This tutorial is designed for you to go through at your own pace and you can pause it at any time. Generative AI tools such as chatbots or image generators have great potential as a tool in aiding our research, investigations or general study. However, generative AI tools or gates can also automate processes that would typically require our own judgment. In a traditional research scenario, using our personal judgment or analysis to conduct these processes improves our overall critical thinking ability with experience, experimentation, and learning via discovery. Developing this critical thinking is of key importance when studying in higher education. So with that in mind, how do we use gates critically? Firstly, we can think about approaching generative AI tools themselves with a critical mindset. If you're thinking about using generative AI tools in your work, consider asking and answering these questions for yourself first. What is my learning objective and could an AI tool help me develop as a learner? Do I have sufficient knowledge and or evidence to verify information and fact check for inaccuracies? Do I have clear reasons for the choices I make? For example, am I clear in the specific prompts that I'm using? Is the AI helping my understanding of concepts and ability to ask further questions or am I just using it for an easy answer? Do I have sufficient agency and control over my interaction with the AI tool? All of these questions can help us reflect upon our use of gates and whether our purpose to use them is justified. Another resource that can help inform our decision to use gates in our work is this flowchart provided by UNESCO. As you can see, the only scenario in which there is a clear cut answer that ChatGPT can be used safely or without much consideration is if it does not matter if the tool's output is true, which is quite a limited situation. When it comes to communicating our critical thought, it is vital that we are transparent in doing so, especially in cases where we have used generative AI tools. Fraudulent representation or submission of AI generated work as your own counts as plagiarism. Further to this, the reporting of fabricated data that is generated by Gates constitutes as fraud and is also a form of academic misconduct. Even if the data, interpretation of data or general information was produced by a Gate, responsibility and accountability will always lie with the human user. As such, it is important to thoroughly research a subject as an independent researcher and not trust solely in information provided by gate outputs, even if it appears to be cited. With this in mind, it's worth considering ways in which using gates can assist your criticality and are generally acceptable, as well as uses of gates that may hinder your critical thinking ability and are considered unacceptable or are prohibited. Some examples of acceptable use may be asking AI to generate revision questions on a topic, which you can then use for practicing in exam conditions. Brainstorming titles for the article you plan to publish based on your dissertation or thesis. Exploring alternative ways to structure your essay. You can then compare the options and decide which one you prefer or come up with a new one. You can test the AI tool's abilities and limits through experimentation and independent fact checking. You can then discuss these findings with your peers or tutors. These methods are all acceptable use of generative AI tools as they're helping to assist our own critical thinking through assisted exploration rather than outright replacing our own judgment or criticality. Conversely, it's worth looking at what would be considered not acceptable use of generative AI tools. Some examples of this may be asking the tool to produce answers, designs or code that you then include in your assignment submission, regardless of whether the use of AI is acknowledged, unless explicitly asked to do so. 
asking for information and trusting the answer without independent verification and fact checking. Submitting something such as a blog post, article, essay or image that was produced using AI without acknowledgement of how it was generated. Entering survey data you've collected into a generative AI system without consent from the participants. As you can see, in comparison to the examples of acceptable use of generative AI tools, the non-acceptable uses leave too much or all of the critical thinking in our work to the tool. In some of the examples, you can see that generated material has been submitted as the user's own. This would be considered fraud or plagiarism and would be punishable as academic misconduct. If you're still unsure what is or is not acceptable use of generative AI tools, have a discussion with your lecturers, your academic tutor or the study advice team. After considering critical questions of generative AI tools in relation to the content of your work, you may also want to ask some critical questions of generative AI tools for yourself as a user. For example, you may want to ask, how are user data used by the company that has developed the tool? Are they shared and with whom? Are they only sharing internally with the controlling organisation or with third parties? Are they used for further training the AI model? And if that's the case, can I opt out from these training models? Do I want to opt out from the models? Given what I've found out from asking the above questions, what information about myself do I feel sh safe sharing in my interactions with the AI agent? The prevalence of free online gates may seem convenient. However, the security and use of your personal information or research data is of utmost importance and using or sharing it should only be done with careful consideration. Finally, it may be worth your time to consult the relevant university policy surrounding generative AI tools to help make sure you're working safely and appropriately. First of all, there's the university policy on academic integrity and academic misconduct. Whilst this policy isn't specifically focused on the use of generative AI tools, it is still an important and ultimately fundamental policy to be aware of to make sure you're working with integrity, avoiding any instances of plagiarism, accidental or otherwise, and academic misconduct. Secondly, there's the policy annex on the use of generative artificial intelligence tools. This document is an amendment to the university policy on academic integrity and academic misconduct listed above in order to further illustrate where and when the use of generative AI tools are appropriate and where their use may constitute academic misconduct. And finally, there's the how to use generative AI with a critical but open mind provided by the study advice team. This guide has been assembled in order to help provide further guidance on how to use generative AI tools in your study productively and what elements of their use you may want to consider.